Welcome to Daily Overdose. You should be a monster. Because everyone says, well, you should be harmless. You don't want to be too aggressive. You don't want to be too assertive. You want to take a back seat. No. You should be a monster. And then you should learn how to control it. The definition of being aggressive is forceful and sometimes overly assertive pursuit of one's aims. In combat, almost nothing will happen the way you want it to if you don't force it that way. The enemy, nature, time, there's all kinds of things that, that are going against you. It's a losing battle. And if you don't use force of will, then, then you're not going to get it done. What it means is, is you need to make things happen. This is the good thing about being aggressive. Sure, there's, there's certain parts of your nature that are aggressive, but it can also be trained. You can start to think with an aggressive mindset, which is I am going to take action. I'm going to overcome obstacles. I'm going to push through roadblocks. I'm not going to take no for an answer. And the, those are things that you can train. There's so often times where people, they get told no or they hit an obstacle and it's game over for them. They're just done. They're done training. They're over it. And your attitude, you have to go, okay. Little, little roadblock, cool. How am I gonna get through it? How am I getting around it? What I need you to do is evaluate yourself today. Evaluate yourself to see where you are in this race of life. Many of you don't even realize that you've been racing to the finish line. This life is a race. Some of you need to be pushed to start running because you've been walking or you haven't been moving for so long. And you don't even know that you're in a race that all of us are competing to win. But it doesn't matter where you finish. It matters that you run after your goals and your dreams. The way to live is to run after your dreams to run after your goals and to run after that finish line. There may be things in your life right now that's holding you back from running, but you have to break through those things. They're there to hinder you, but you can't let it force you to stop running. Chase your dreams, chase your goals. I don't know the situation you're in right now, but the situation that you're in is not your future. It's not who you really are. It's not your full potential. The sky's the limit, but it all starts from within. It's all up to you. You should be a monster. You have to be hungry for greatness. You got to go through it to get to it. You got to understand that there are going to be many circumstances that will require your full undivided attention. You got to go through it to get to it. You have to understand it has to be a unique mindset. Setting a goal and then going beyond it. Realizing that there's work to be done. Making sure that all of the strings are attached. And make no mistake along the way. Now it's true that we all make mistakes and we will have many setbacks. But there's always room for a comeback. To understand this, you must realize that you must humble yourself, but yet be hungry enough to go after it with everything inside of you. Everything that is required depends on you. Having the mindset that regardless of anything that is around you, that is surrounding you, 
that is trying to drag you down. You must have the mindset. You must be strong. You must be resilient. You must be driven. And you must be able to take whatever's coming at you. If you stumble, if you fall, have the ability to get up. But you can't depend on just your body to do the work. You must understand that it's the mental fortitude that will get you through it all. So many people don't have this fortitude. They don't have this attitude. They have no faith in themselves. If you, you as the individual, can take the first step, then perhaps many more will follow. There's always going to be ups and downs in life, man. There's always going to be bumps in the road. Things that ain't going to go as planned. Unexpected stuff's going to happen. You're going to face some pain. You're going to face some tough times. And if you ain't trained your mind to be prepared for it and how to handle it, it's going to break you. The secret is to work on your mindset daily. Work on the way that you see the world. Otherwise, you'll live your whole life seeing the world through someone else's eyes. You'll be a creature of circumstance. You'll be a victim of your life and not the master of it. Read books, listen to audios like this one. Start learning about why you do the things that you shouldn't do and why you don't do the things that you should. It's all because of the way that thing between your ears is white. But know this, you're in control of rewiring it whenever you make the decision to do so. At any moment, you can take control back of your life and start creating a life that you deserve, not a life that someone else has paved out for you. And when all of the struggle comes, all of the bad times, all of the dark times come around, which they inevitably will, you'll be strong enough to take it head on and it will make you rather than break you. You have greatness inside you, let me tell you. Unlimited potential. But you have to train your mind. Every single day, things are going to happen outside of your control. The weather, terrorism, coronavirus. But you can't control any of that shit. All you can control is how you choose to look at situations. You can control the information that you're letting it hear. Never forget that you can have anything in this life that you want if you're willing to go and get it. You've got to have belief. You've got to have belief and that belief comes from working on your mindset every single day. Remember this. You can be a victim of your life or the master of it. It's time to get real. It's time to get raw. It's time to look ourselves in the mirror and come to the resolve that this version of ourself is not going to carry us in the stretch. I've been this version of myself long enough that if I don't change, if I don't do something about this, then I'm going to find myself bankrupt. Having that faith, that vulnerability to just see things that are hard to see. You gotta get comfortable being uncomfortable. So can you handle the truth? It's a question. And if you can't, then you, if you see that, then you can say, well, is, if I'm gonna change, I'm gonna have to figure out how to deal with that discomfort until the point that I can see what I need to see, then I can change it. So it's the persistence of continuing to do something until you can do it. Can't is not an option. It's either I, I will or I won't. I can, I know I can, but I will or I won't, you know? And, um, and that's the thing. And in some cases, you may try your hardest and you just don't win or you don't pass a test or you don't succeed. That's part of life. Understanding it's gonna take hard work, discipline, and, and learning how to work with other people in order to get to the next level. There's not other people that aren't holding you back. Your boss isn't holding you back. Your parents aren't holding you back. Those are excuses. To me, there's no such thing as luck, okay? All luck is preparation meeting opportunity, plain and simple. Once I realized that I could get better at anything, it dawned on me that how I spend my time is a spiritual consideration. And I didn't want to die with potential that I failed to turn into skill set. That to me, that speaks to me. How much of my potential can I actually turn into skill set and get good at this stuff and push and grow and improve? Like, 
that to me is just this incredibly intoxicating way. You're waking up every morning with a desire to adapt, with a desire to change. Stand out today. Be different. Become something different. Stop lying to yourself and stand up and become something with worth, something with more than you've ever been. Your goals, your goals that you set for yourself, that's your power. Your ambition is your power. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. You have to electrify and get all the things that are necessary within you to start doing the things that you need to do. So when the time comes, you can kick down that door and move towards the possibilities of being the best of who you really are. Learning how to concentrate, learning how to focus in, deciding that you're going to focus to develop your skills. You'll be surprised of the ideas that will come to you, of the people that you'll be able to attract, of the opportunities that you'll be able to see. You'll begin to see things that have been standing there looking you in the face saying, I can't believe this has been here all this time. There are so many people in the world, and, and, and you know, you may be watching this right now, and you have these incredible ideas and what you think is missing is motivation. And that's not true. Because the way that our minds are wired and the fact about human beings is that we are not designed to do things that are uncomfortable or scary or difficult. Our brains are designed to protect us from those things because our brains are trying to keep us alive. And in order to change, in order to build a business, in order to be the best parent, the best spouse, to do all those things that you know you want to do with your life, with your work, with your dreams, you're going to have to do things that are difficult, uncertain, or scary, which sets up this problem for all of us. You're never going to feel like it. Why is it so hard to do the little things that would improve my life? waking up and realizing that I'm never going to feel like doing the things that are tough or difficult or uncertain or scary or new, so I need to stop waiting until I feel like it. And number two, I am one decision away from a totally different marriage, a totally different life, a totally different job, a totally different income. Whatever you don't use, you lose. Lack of use causes loss. On this planet, maybe not the next one, but on this one. If you tie your arm to your body, leave it there long enough, you'll never use it again. It's over for the arm. Now, it may not be over, but it's over for the arm. The only way to keep the use of this arm is what? Keep using it. If you quit, you lose automatically. They don't bring it up for a vote. You lose automatically when you quit. Now, the same thing that goes for your arm goes for your brain mentality. The same thing goes for all the human virtues. Ambition, unused, decline. Strong feelings, unused, diminish. It doesn't grow, it diminishes. Faith, unused, decreases. It's a law. Vitality, unused, diminishes. Energy, unused, decreases. The guy says, well, I'm going to save up my energy. You can't do that. That's like trying to save today, put it on the end of the year. See, you can't do that. They'll come take you away. If you don't use today, what? It's lost. The guy says, well, I'll work twice as hard tomorrow to make up for it. See, that's foolish. You could have done that anyway. Today unused is lost. A talent unused is lost. An ability unused is lost. So here's one of the key expressions of the evening. Take a new inventory of yourself. Starting tomorrow, new project. Take a new inventory and make sure that all of your talent and ability and mentality and ingenuity and vitality and strong feelings, faith, courage, make sure that all you've got is being used. Otherwise, you lose. Resolve to focus on the solution and what can be done now rather than on what happened and who's to blame. Think in terms of the action you can take to resolve the situation rather than what went wrong and who is to blame. To remain optimistic, look for the good in every situation. When you look for something good, you will always find something good. Furthermore, while you're looking for something good because your conscious mind can hold only one thought at a time, you will automatically become positive, optimistic, 
and back in full control. Seek the valuable lesson in every problem or difficulty. Every setback you face contains one or more lessons that have been sent to you to help you be more successful in the future. The difference between successes and failures is simple. Failures feel sorry for themselves when things go wrong, whereas successful people look for the valuable lesson they can learn that will help them in the future. Normal Vincent Peale used to say, when God wants to send you a gift, he wraps it up in a problem. The bigger the gift that God wants to send you, the bigger the problem he wraps it up in. Instead of concentrating on the problem, look for the gift. Wonderfully enough, you will always find it. What's more, sometimes the gift or valuable lesson can be of far greater value than the cost of the problem itself. Sometimes one lesson that you learn in dealing with a problem can be the key to your long-term success. As Napoleon Hill wrote, within every problem or obstacle lays the seed of an equal or greater opportunity or benefit. Your job is to find it. Continually think of yourself as a strong, powerful, resolute person in the face of adversity. In World War, a British general was described by his superiors. There he stands like an iron peg driven into the frozen ground, immovable. Let this be an accurate description of you whenever you face difficulties or problems of any kind. Resolve to stand like an iron peg driven into the frozen ground. When you resolve in advance that you will never give up, your success is virtually guaranteed. In the final analysis, nothing can really stop you but yourself. In life, it doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down. All that matters is how many times you get back up. If you continue to get back up and press onward, you must eventually reach your goal. Each time you exert yourself, discipline to persist in the face of adversity. You also increase your self-esteem and self-confidence. Then, as your self-esteem increases, you feel stronger, more powerful, and more unstoppable. When you feel better and stronger, you become more capable of persisting the next time. And then the time after that, by disciplining yourself to persist in the face of all adversity, you put your life onto an upward spiral of self-esteem, self-discipline, and persistence until you eventually become like a force of nature. I think the best way to prove your, your value is to work, is to learn, is to absorb, uh, to be a sponge. But you always want to outwork your potential. You know, as hard as you believe you can work, you can work harder than that. And that's what I tried to do when I first came in the league. But, you know, basketball is such a direct competition sport. And me coming in at 17, I hated when, like, my teammates would say, you know, I get hit with an elbow. Right? Shaq would hit me with an elbow in practice. I always had that extra chip on my shoulder. So, like, every day in practice for me was really trying to annihilate everybody that was that I was playing against. I wanted to prove you don't need to babysit me. And so it's always that competitive nature, the work ethic, and curiosity. My philosophy was a very simple one. Rudy was one of my favorite films growing up. After watching that film, I come to understand if I could work that hard, what would my career be? And I made a promise to myself from that day that I was gonna work that hard every single day so that when I do retire, I have no regrets. And that was the most important thing for me is to leave no stone unturned, get better every single day. And if I live that way, then over time, you know, I'd have something that was beautiful. But that was my philosophy. It seems like a pretty simple one, but if you live your life to just get better every single day, you do that for 20 years, I mean, what do you have?